The last thing I'd like to talk to you about before we move on to our first mechanical head is about cables and controls. Once you've built your mechanics, there are several ways that you can control them. One of them is by simply inserting your hand into the mechanical head that you've built and moving the mechanics with your fingers or wrist. Another popular way is by means of cables, where one end of a cable is connected to the mechanics on the inside of the head and the other end is connected to a controller and moved by an operator outside of camera range. There are other ways such as hydraulic cylinders, pneumatic cylinders, or radio controlled servos, but the ways we use for this video were primarily cable controlled and hand operated. Now cables are made up of two main pieces, an outer housing or a casing, and then a cable or wire that moves on the inside of the housing or casing. There are many options of things that you can use for both cables and housings. Here are some that I find most helpful. The simplest and probably the cheapest type of cable you can use is a simple derailleur cable off a bicycle. You can pick these up for about $1.50 each. The ends can be snipped off and the cable and casing cut to length with a pair of wire cutters. For casings, you can also use small plastic tubing like this. You can find this in a wide variety of sizes and you can find it at most hardware and auto parts stores. You can also use flexible copper tubing like this. It also comes in a wide variety of sizes. As cable, you can use different types of fishing line, different types of string or small rope, or thin cable like this. This is used to fly model airplanes and can be found at a hobby store. When working with cables, it's very important that the ends of the casing be secured so that the cable moves freely inside. Here are a few ways that you can secure the ends of the casing. One way is to hold it down with a piece of wire like this. Another way is to drill a hole slightly smaller than your casing and squeeze your casing into it. You can also use this method by drilling a hole in a thumb screw and inserting your casing into it. Another method is to simply glue your casing in place. There are also a variety of small clips and clamps you can use for holding down casings. Once your housing is secure, you'll have to connect one end of your cable to the mechanical device you wish to move. Here are a few ways you can do that. One way is to leave one of the ends on the derailleur cable and then slip the cable through a hole. If you're using fishing line, you can simply tie it into a hole. If you're using thin cable, it can also be tied or twisted. If you're using derailleur cable, you can also loop it through a hole and then clamp it using a cable ferrule. Or you can make your own little stop out of a piece of small copper tubing and then crimp it onto the cable. There are also a variety of small fishing line connectors that are helpful when working with cables. With one end of the cable connected to the mechanics that you wish to move, the other end must be connected to some type of controller that will allow you to push or pull the cable through the housing 
to move the mechanics. Here are a few types of controllers you can use. Obviously the simplest way to control a cable is by simply holding the casing with one hand and moving the cable with the other. Another type of controller you can use is a simple bicycle brake lever. You can also use different types of throttle control levers off of mowers. You can also easily build a controller like this out of two pieces of wood and two pieces of 1024 threaded rod. The white rings are pieces of PVC tubing. This controller is a little more elaborate, but it's very easy to build. It's simply two pieces of wood screwed together at 90 degrees. The handles are held in place by a piece of quarter 20 threaded rod, and we've mounted a piece of bar stock in front of the handles and put thumb screws in it to use as cable tension adjusters. Cable movement can be either the push-pull variety, where the operator has to push and pull on the cable to activate the mechanics, or it can be the spring return variety, where the operator either pushes or pulls on the cable, and a spring connected to either end of the cable returns it to its original position. We use both methods in the mechanical heads we'll be building. Now, let's move on to building our first mechanical head.